Good morning, my name is Eugene Bryce of Bryce Energy Services and I'd like to do a short presentation on business carbon footprint and I liken it to Pandora's box. Um, what prompted this was that last week I attended a couple of webinars um, from companies presenting what they're doing on carbon footprint, um, sustainability, all sorts of green issues. And there was one particular company that has implemented quite a lot of energy efficiency, sustainability policies and issues, and clearly it was high on their to-do list. And just on the usual Zoom chat, I asked the question, well, what is your carbon footprint? And they didn't know, which surprised, little shocked me. And unfortunately, I didn't get into a discussion with them about why they didn't have a carbon footprint. Um, I don't think, you know, I didn't want to berate them for the fact. But I think the importance of understanding your carbon footprint and appreciating that it will never be spot on and in fact it could take a number of years to get it uh, I'll call a reasonably accurate carbon footprint and, and that's pretty much the theme of this short presentation just to remind people what it is that we're trying to achieve and how you may go about it so if I press on to the first slide So Pandora's box, if you're not familiar with the legend, um, poor Pandora had a box that contained all the demons in the world. And in the context of carbon footprint, our demons are gas, staff, fuel, CO2, N2O nitrous oxide, um, F gases from air conditioning, waste. So what we need to do is for each business um, to really open the Pandora's box of where carbon is being emitted from their business and from their supply chain. Now, um, this is where my knowledge of uh, uh, Greek mythology may fall down, but as I understand, hope is was left in Pandora's box and it was closed by the gods. But if we can release hope and in doing so, it's a case of measuring and reducing the carbon footprint. So hopefully that's not too vague, but <laughs> the idea is um, you need to dive deep, look at the demons of carbon and set a plan to measure and reduce measure and reduce and at the very least that's an annual cycle so let's take a look at scope one scope two and scope three which is how greenhouse gas emissions are defined so if we take a look at scope one items included in scope one so direct co2 emissions these are what your business are directly responsible for natural gas for heating fuel for business vehicles all your delivery transport air conditioning hvac specifically f gases used in those systems and really any burning material so if you're burning gas natural gas lpg diesel petrol these are all your scope one emissions so if we take a hypothetical curve of tracking your scope one emissions what i have here is a purple line showing the calculated value by a business each year now I've also shown error bars. Now, this is as much about how you collect the data as the accuracy of the data. Now, scope one, we're talking about 
for most businesses, fuels, diesel, natural gas, F gases. All of these should be readily measurable. So if you're a transport company, I'm, I'm sure you have a very detailed picture of how much diesel your vehicles are using. Um, if you're, for example, a large hotel with multiple air conditioning units, you should have an F gas register and know exactly how much F gas is being used to top up your air conditioning or refrigeration on an annual basis. Now, also within the uncertainty is perhaps you haven't included everything. So for example, in this curve, the carbon emissions actually jump up in the second year and we still have a potentially large error grade, error uh, margin um, on 2022. So when you first calculate your scope one emissions, you may have inadvertently overlooked something that you should then include in 2022. Then perhaps you've undertaken some sort of significant mitigation between 22 and 23, either you plan for it or you'll undertake it. And in this example, I've said um, some of those delivery vehicles may be converted to electric vehicles. Therefore, less fossil fuel use, less petrol, less diesel. Um, so therefore, the emissions come down. Now, also, as we go forward, the error bars are tightening up. So as you become more experienced in measuring CO2 emissions, scope one, your margin for error in these figures reduces year on year. It will never reduce to zero. There will always be some uncertainty, perhaps with how data is recorded. Um, but as you go forward, certainly for scope one, the you should be reaching a confidence level of plus or minus 10% in your um, carbon footprint. Move forward. Scope two is about electricity. It is still a direct emissions from your business. It's about electric vehicles that you use, but it's also about heat and steam. So if you are lucky enough to be on a district heating network, um, the heat and steam that you receive in, in from whatever source needs to be included for their carbon footprint within scope two uh, electricity. Um, so direct electricity use. Um, also bear in mind for some reporting requirements, um, you are required to report your worldwide emissions. So what, what we're describing here is not only for your UK business, but for your global business. And how you report that, there is some leeway, you know, obviously you can define for the UK, we emit this for our, for example, European operations, we emit this for our Asian operations, et cetera, et cetera. But you do need to report for each area under scope one, scope two, and scope three. So I'll move forward. So similarly to our scope one curve, here we have our electricity use curve. And what we have here is a very well-defined line. And that's simply because the electricity usage is taken directly from your electricity bill, which hopefully is very accurate. So as you can see here, um, we have a bit of a, a step change from 22 to 23. So as I mentioned previously, what we've done here is move from fossil fuel vehicles to electric vehicles. And that is reflected obviously in greater use of electricity. So naturally the electricity bill has gone up, but what we have here is also a general trend downward. So as a business, what you want to do is look at energy efficiency measures, perhaps um, use of solar panels for self-generation, whatever it may be. But 
always bear in mind, um, you will never remove electricity. What you want is to remove carbon, but you will still be using obviously electricity. Um, other options, you could go for green contracts, uh, green electricity contracts, whereby you're specifically paying for renewable energy to offset the carbon footprint for scope two. But even if you are buying green, you do have to report the emissions as per UK government conversion factors, and I'll explain a bit more, um, for scope two. So you, for example, in 22, this company has about 600 tons of CO2 associated with electricity. Then you can say, by the way, well, this is offset by a green energy contract, but you can't say zero. You have to say 600, but offset by green energy. Finally, scope three, indirect CO2 emissions. And this is the, the biggest one for most businesses. It contains certainly the most items that you need to investigate. And the more generally, I should say, scope three are indirect emissions. So your, these are emissions as a result of your business existing but not necessarily in under the, the direct control of your business. So for example, waste disposal, you may have a waste carrier who takes away your waste and either recycles it, sends it to landfill. So you're indirectly responsible for that because your business obviously generated the waste, but it's the waste company that's directly responsible for it. So your business reports that under scope three. Now, quite a lot under scope three, and it won't be immediately obvious to businesses how you gather the data, but you know it covers everything from water usage, which is does have a carbon impact, so your water into your business and your wastewater out, hotel stays, staff travel, business travel, business expenses. The largest one would be supply chain goods. So your suppliers into the business and who you onward travel your finished product. Um, other thing to consider, construction works. So if you're either building or demolishing um, buildings on site, that's included in your scope three emissions. So as previously, um, a little graph of what you can expect. Again, we have a slightly rising curve at the start as understanding and real data starts coming through. Also, the error bars are tending towards higher um, simply because people tend to underestimate scope three. So there's greater potential that your actual scope three is higher than your reporting. And also you may not understand or even appreciating year one or year two where exactly all the carbon in scope three is. So it's a, the error bars or the magnitude of the error bars reflect the uncertainty and development of the business's process for calculating scope three. So as time goes on, you hope to tighten the error bars and be a bit more precise in your scope three emissions, but you'll, you'll plus or minus, oh, I don't know, 10 to 20% perhaps would be even the optimum best. Um, you're doing very well if you get to that point. But I think understand that, make a start, but, but at least a point on a graph, understand where the data is robust, where it needs greater investigation the following year to refine it and continue those processes. So it's about engagement with suppliers. It's about perhaps refining your travel expense policy to include, for example, kilometers traveled, et cetera, uh, train travel, how many kilometers were actually traveled rather than just, you know, postcode A to postcode B. Um, so yeah, indirect uh, CO2 emission scope three. So one thing I was 
perhaps a bit curious about is the relative scale of scope one, scope two, and scope three across um, multiple businesses. Now, this is um, a graph I, I got from this reference. So Edgar and Richard here. Always, if you do pull data from the internet, it's always good to reference um, the authors. A, because they probably did a, put a lot of work into it, but it's just the proper thing to do. So here, the, these, uh, these guys have produced these charts. And I'll just add I, the top chart here, PGCO2 per annum. I didn't really understand what PGCO carbon. It's uh, numbers represent reservoir mass, also called carbon stocks. And one PGC is equivalent of 10 to the power of 15 grams of carbon. So it's um, it's a measurement of the relative scale of the emissions from each industry. Perhaps a more interesting chart is the lower chart. And this is the percentage share of scope one, scope two and scope three by industry. So. For example, we'll look at the transport industry where the vast bulk of it is scope one, which is not surprising because transport is direct use of petrol, diesel, natural gas, um, aviation fuel. Whereas buildings, uh, take a look at, we have a pretty much equal mix of scope one, scope two. So the buildings are obviously heated by natural gas, plenty of electrical use, but also scope three makes up about half of it. So that's their suppliers, their waste, and all those things that are included in scope three. So depending on your industry, you, you will find quite a swing between how much is scope one, scope two, and scope three. So Remembering scope one and scope two are what your business is directly responsible for. And scope three is what your business is indirectly responsible for, primarily because there is another business directly responsible for it. Um, hope that makes sense. So over the last year, I've produced a number of other videos on scope one, scope two, scope three, and carbon emissions for business. So you'll be able to find them on our YouTube page and I'll put a link into the social media. But if you simply type Price Energy Services into YouTube, you'll find our channel fairly directly. And videos I draw your attention to are what is one ton of CO2? So this is a video just explaining what actually a ton of CO2 is your carbon footprint using greenhouse gas conversion factors. So this uses the UK government conversion factors for scope one, scope two, and scope three to calculate a business's carbon footprint. And finally, um, a short video on supply chain and understanding what you need to do with your supply chain, predominantly your suppliers, to understand the carbon footprint of goods arriving at your business. So I hope you enjoyed that short presentation on carbon footprint and Pandora's box. If you would like to contact us, feel free to drop an email to info at briceenergyservices.com or visit our website, briceenergyservices.com. Or you can follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube. So follow, subscribe, or simply lurk. So that's about it. Thank you very much. And do look at the other videos on our YouTube channel. Thank you.